you can go through deburring these in various ways, or you could just drill a hole with ECM. When you drill a hole with ECM, there are no burrs. So the entire deburring operation chain after your uh, initial processing is completely eliminated. Welcome back to MTD CNC. I am standing in front of a machine that is very unique to me and I'm standing beside a guy who is pretty awesome that's going to share with us how electrochemical machining works and teach me and hopefully you guys as well a little bit more about where you can utilize it and the benefits it might bring you in your shop. Simon, how are you today and thank you for being a part of MTD. Yeah, good to be here and uh, electrochemical machining this is a process that's sort of like reverse electroplating. That's the easiest way to think of it. So we've got an electrical process and a chemical process all occurring at the same time and it drives machining. So we've got up here cathodes in this case. We're standing in front of a CI2500. This one in particular is a rifling machine. We have eight pistol barrels lined up side by side and we rifle these pistol barrels with eight cathodes each cathode is individually controlled and what the cathode is it's, a, it's an electron source really so we're piling up electrons on these tools here and this surplus of electrons on the tool will generate a negative charge at the same time we'll have a workpiece in here that's a gun barrel in this case and on that workpiece we're actually taking away a little bit of electrons and what you get is a situation where you have metal in the workpiece that's become ionized because you've taken away electrons and it's going to look for an electron somewhere some kind of negative charge it's going to try to find that and so conveniently we have this tool which is going to be right next to the workpiece of course and the conductive surfaces on that tool are going to be a great opportunity for those ions to try to jump off an electroplate onto the tool the thing is, we're running a high-pressure electrolyte, that's basically just salt water, and this electrolyte will wash away the ions that try to jump off. They'll become a nitrate salt, and they'll go through our filtration system. That is so fascinating to me, Simon. So, from my perspective, when learning about this machine, does the material hardness matter when machining with electrochemical manufacturing? Not at all. So we could machine a hardened steel and a soft steel and it doesn't matter. And the reason for that is because there are no cutting forces. The machine simply removes the atoms on the workpiece with an electrochemical reaction, like what you'd have inside a battery. And because of that, and because there's no mechanical forces, we get a couple benefits. One of those benefits is that the machine itself is not subject to massive you know, rattling, ringing, uh, stresses inside the um, machine itself and so we can we can build things with more uh, more gentle fixturing and tooling that would normally be beat up if you're using it in a uh, high pressure system the only thing we really have to deal with is uh, your electrolyte pressure and compared to the forces you'll get in a conventional cutting tool where you have an end mill for example or a turning machine and you're just digging it into a piece of metal we only have electrochemical forces here it's really a chemical reaction so there is no force on the part we're just pulling off the atoms it's very intriguing so now that you did mention an end mill real quick and we talked about the gun barrels already in my head the first thing I think about is broaching of some sort but with a machine like this, we don't really have to worry about tool life. So are we saving money when it comes to tools as well? Yeah, that's one of the main benefits of ECM. ECM tools last a very long time because they actually don't touch the workpiece in many applications. For example, uh, when we're talking about turbine manufacturing, we're doing a surface profile operation. And we actually come in with cathodes from the side and we sink that complex form right into a solid block of metal. And we can turn that coupon into an airfoil. While that happens, the cathode never actually touches the workpiece. There's a very small gap just uh, 
couple thousandths of an inch really. And within this gap, we have electrolyte that flushes and cleans the work area. Because of that, and because you're not putting any hard forces on your tools, you're not touching the workpiece, you end up with a tool that really lasts until you short it out, until someone breaks it. Or in some cases where we do have, where in the case of rifling, there's a per barrel limit that we have at which point you'll start wearing down the plastic. We found it's quite a uh, large limit though because the, the tools are really just sliding on metal and they're not pushing on it or cutting into it or gouging it out. Simon, this is so impressive to me. Uh, another thing that comes to mind is I see the finish of the parts. I listen to you talk about how this is actually done. Are we removing all secondary operations as well? When we get it off the machine, it's ready to go, right? It depends on really what the customer wants. Okay. In a lot of processes, we have no secondary operations. So for example, you have, say, a camshaft, and you want to drill some oil holes in this camshaft. Well, one of the big problems with internal combustion engines is that you don't want a bunch of metal fragments going around inside your engine after it's been put together. So you can go through deburring these in various ways, or you could just drill a hole with ECM. When you drill a hole with ECM, there are no burrs. So the entire deburring operation chain after your uh, initial processing is completely eliminated. Well, Simon, to bring this around full circle, talking about hard materials, is it okay if we talk a little bit about super alloys as well? Absolutely. Super alloys are one of the biggest benefits of ECM. Since it doesn't matter how hard the workpiece is, we can machine things like Inconel or Hastelloy with no problems. In fact, you get very good surface finishes with these materials. This is especially a benefit for aerospace customers who are making very high heat components inside rocket engines and aircraft engines, as well as our gun customers who are getting progressively more interested in barrels from super alloy materials such as Inconel. Simon, let me just say, I really appreciate the time I get to spend with people like you who are a lot smarter than me to help me ed be educated, or in this case, because he is so much smarter, to be educated on a machine just like this. Simon, truly, truly a pleasure. Technology, I'm very grateful to learn about. It's very obvious to me how much wisdom you have and passion when it comes to this type of technology. So thank you for sharing that with the audience. They love to learn new projects as well. I know this is old news to you, but there's a lot of folks out there very excited to learn about this. So thank you so much.